So <laughs> maybe like taking a little step back from your perspective, not from the low, not from the beautiful hypergraph Wolfram physics model perspective, but from the perspective of 20th century physics, what is general relativity? What is quantum mechanics? How do you think about these two theories from the context of the theory of everything? Like, is just even definition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I mean, you know, a little bit of history of physics, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, the the, you know, okay, very very quick history of physics, yes. right? <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, physics. You know, in ancient Greek times, people basically said we can just figure out how the world works. As you know, we're philosophers. We're going to figure out how the world works. You know, some philosophers thought there were atoms. Some philosophers thought there were, you know, continuous flows of things. People had different ideas about how the world works, and they tried to just say we're going to construct this idea of how, how the world works. They didn't really have sort of notions of doing experiments and so on quite the same way as developed later. So that was sort of an early tradition for thinking about sort of models of the world. Then, by the time of 1600s, time of Galileo and then Newton. Um, sort of the big, the big idea there was, you know, you know, title of Newton's book, you know, Principia Mathematica, mathematical principles of natural philosophy. We can use mathematics to understand natural philosophy, to understand things about the way the world works, and so that then led to this kind of idea that you know we can write down a mathematical equation. And have that represent how the world works. So Newton's one of his most famous ones is his universal law of gravity, inverse square law of gravity, that allowed him to compute all sorts of features of of the planets and so on. Although some of them he got wrong, and it was took another hundred years for people to actually be able to do the math uh, to the level that was needed. But but um, but so that that had been this sort of tradition was we write down these mathematical equations. We don't really know where these equations come from. We write them down. Then we figure out, we work out the consequences, and we say yes, that agrees with what we actually observe in astronomy or something like this. So that tradition continued, and、um, then the first of these two sort of great 20th century、uh, innovations was、uh, well, the history is actually a little bit more complicated, but let's let's say that <laughs>、yeah. the the,、um, the 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 the、uh, there were two quantum mechanics and general relativity. Quantum mechanics, the kind of 1900 was kind of the very early、uh, stuff done by Planck that led to. The idea of photons, particles of light,、um, but let's let's take general relativity first. One one feature of the story is that special relativity, thing Einstein invented in 1905, was something which surprisingly was a kind of logically invented theory. It was not a theory where it was something where, given these ideas that were sort of axiomatically thought to be true about the world, it followed that such and such a thing would be the case. It was a little bit different from the the kind of methodological structure of some of some existing theories in more in the more recent times, where it's just been we write down an equation and we find out that it works. So what happened there? So there's some reasoning about the light. The basic idea was the you know the speed of light is appears to be constant.、Uh, you know even if you're traveling very fast, you shine a flashlight, the light will come out. It, even if you're going at half the speed of light. The light doesn't come out of your flashlight at one and a half times the speed of light.、Um, it's still just the speed of light. And to make that work, you have to change your view of how space and time work、um, to be able to account for the fact that when you're going faster, it appears that you know、uh, length is foreshortened and time is dilated and things like this. And that's special relativity. That's special relativity. So then Einstein went on with sort of vaguely similar kinds of thinking. 1915. Invented general relativity, which is the theory of gravity, and the basic point of general relativity is is it's a theory that says when there is mass in space, space is curved.、Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? You know, you usually you think of、uh, what's the shortest distance between two points? Like in a, ordinarily in on a plane in space, it's a straight line. You know, photons, light goes in straight lines. Well. Then the question is: Is if if you have a curved surface, a straight line is no longer straight on the surface of the Earth. The shortest distance between two points is a great circle. It's a circle.、Um, it's、uh, so you know Einstein's observation was maybe the physical、uh, structure of space is such that space is curved. So the shortest distance between two points, the the path, the straight line in quotes. 
won't be straight anymore. And in particular, if a if a photon is is you know traveling near near the sun or something, or if a particle is going something is traveling near the sun, maybe the shortest path will be one that is is uh, is, is something which looks curved to us because it seems curved to us because space has been deformed by the presence of mass associated with that that uh, massive object. So so the kind of the idea uh, there is. Um, think of the structure of space as being a dynamical, changing kind of thing. But then what Einstein did was he wrote down these differential equations that basically represented the curvature of space and its response to the presence of mass and energy. And that all ultimately is connected to the force of gravity, which is one of the forces that seems to, based on its strength, operate on a different scale than some of the other forces. So it operates at a scale yeah. that's very large. What happens there is is just this this curvature of space, which causes you know the paths of objects to be deflected. That's what gravity does. It causes the paths of objects to be deflected, and this is a, an explanation for gravity, so to speak. And the surprise is that from 1915 until today, everything that we measured about gravity precisely agrees with general relativity. And that's um, uh, and that you know it wasn't clear black holes were sort of a predict. Well, actually, the expansion of the universe was an early potential prediction. Although Einstein tried to sort of patch up his equations to make it not cause the universe to expand, because it was kind of so obvious the universe wasn't expanding. And um, uh, you know, it turns out it was expanding, and he should have just trusted the equations. And that's a lesson for for those of us um, interested in making fundamental theories of physics: is you should trust your theory and not try and patch it because of something that you think might be the case that um, uh, that that might turn out not to be the case. E even if the theory says something crazy is happening. Yeah, right. Like the universe like, is like expanding. Like the universe is expanding, right, which is, but, but, um, but, you know, then it took until the 1940s, probably even really until the 1960s, until people understood that black holes were a consequence of, of general relativity and so on. But that's, um, you know, the big surprise has been that so far, this theory of gravity has perfectly agreed with, you know, these collisions of black holes seen by their gravitational waves, you know, it all just works. So that's been kind of one pillar of the story of physics. It's mathematically complicated to work out the consequences of general relativity, but it's not, there's, there's no, I mean, and, 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 and some things are kind of squiggly and complicated, like people believe, you know, energy is conserved. Okay, well, energy conservation doesn't really work in general relativity in the same way as it ordinarily does. And it's all a big mathematical story of how you actually nail down something that is definitive that you can talk about and not specific to the you know, reference frames you're operating in and so on and so on and so on. But fundamentally, general relativity is a straight shot in the sense that you have this theory, you work out its consequences. Um, and and that, that theory is useful in terms of basic science and trying to understand the way black holes work, the way the creation of galaxies work, sort of all of these kind of cosmological things, understanding what happened, like you said, at the Big Bang, yeah, like all those kinds of, well, no, not, not at the Big Bang, actually, right? But the... Well, features of the expansion of the universe, yes. I mean, the and, the, and there, are, there are lots of details where we don't quite know how it's working, you know, is there, you know, where's the dark matter, is there dark energy, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, but fundamentally, the, the, you know, the testable features of general relativity, it all works very beautifully. And it's, it's in a sense, it is mathematically sophisticated, but it is not conceptually hard to understand in some sense.